Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm taking more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. If you have a question you'd like to ask me, then put it in the comments below. That is where I pull these questions from. Recently, there were a couple of questions that were asked that I didn't totally know the answers to, and I said that I would perhaps see if our friend John Dayton could share um, some answers. So John saw those questions, and indeed, I now have um, some fun things from John um, that he shared, uh, including the answer to a couple of those questions. So John said, stage 26 was 10,600 square feet, and the ceiling was 35 feet high. To the best of my recall, our sets remained in place over the hiatus, and this made perfect sense as there really wasn't time to strike all our sets, lights, etc., and then have to totally reset for the next season. Um, and if another show were to come in during the break, they would have the construction, etc., and then have to strike theirs before we could move in and start construction of ours. Uh, also to consider is if we struck, we would have to deal with any damage and repair, etc., uh, so it just made sense to keep the sets remaining. Uh, by the way, we did have a set on stage 26 of the front of the house, uh, the front porch, etc. So yes, we did use that for um, outside the house, but sometimes we would shoot the front porch on the house. And I've talked about that sometimes when you could see through the windows and see into the living room. Maybe somebody was at the piano. Maybe all a bunch of us were leaning over the couch watching outside. So when you could fully see into the living room or kitchen, that was shot on the porch on the actual, actual soundstage. Uh, let's see. So John continues to say, as for company moves from the back lot, because someone asked how long that took to do, I recall the fastest move we ever made was 20 minutes, unheard of today. And I was very proud of that. We did move fast, we just had to. One day while shooting on 26, we made a move to another area of 26 where there was an auditorium set replete with a stage where John Boy was to give out diplomas to Walton school graduates and seats for the audience, which were occupied by extras and Michael and Ralph. I believe it was the career girl episode, we'll have to I'll have to look at that episode and, and see about covering it and see what we have there. Anyway, the point was that we were moving so fast that when we moved to that set, the crew were still finishing up. Harry Harris was directing and asked me to quickly get into wardrobe. I quickly took a seat next to the podium where Richard would give me a diploma. Well, I being aware of the need to get the scene shot quickly, simply sat in the chair while lighting was being set. When we rolled film, I got up to do my thing. I had been sitting so long that the paint, which was still sticky, had attached to the bottom of my shoes. And when I made the cross to the podium floor, they came off with each step. I broke out of character, got the giggles, and we had to cut. Richard looked at me and began laughing and said, was it something I said? I pointed to the bare floor footprints and the paint on my shoes and we just lost it. And sometimes when actors get the giggles, you just can't stop. Long story short, which is uh, too late, <laughs> we worked very fast. One more thing, although the house on the back lot was only facade, there wasn't a day when I didn't imagine it was the real thing. Oh, and I also recall there being ladders behind each of the windows the cast would have to climb if they needed to deliver from a window. Judy, do you recall this? Yes, I absolutely do. Thank you so much, John, for sharing those cute little anecdotes and the information. And for those of you uh, who have seen John as a guest before, I have reached out to him. We have been in contact and we're looking at shooting another segment sometime soon to share more of John's uh, memories of the Waltons and also about some of the interesting other projects he has worked on in his career that I think you might also find fascinating. This question is from Scott. Were the items on set spiked as they would be on stage in theater or were props people responsible for putting things back in the original spot if they got moved for the camera angles? When he talks about spiking things, like when you're working on the stage, uh, if there's going to be a couch or there's going to be something, because often uh, pieces of furniture move, set pieces move when you're on stage. You see that, you move from scene to scene and things move. Well, what they do is they put marks where the different pieces go so that when they come back, they are put in the same place so that the lights that have been set will be in the right place for the actors to be lit. Um, on sets, we did not spike things because those would have been seen. Plus, 
you could, through the camera, you could adjust things before you said roll, or if something wasn't quite right, you could make adjustments. So it wasn't quite so critical. But yes, there was a combination of prop people would pay attention, the script supervisor would pay attention, um, the actors would pay attention, and when things needed to be reset, you know, sometimes the actors would just move something back. We were allowed to do that if it was a prop we were working with, um, or the prop people would come back in and reset. It would be like reset, and people would step in and do that. They also took Polaroids sometimes to keep track of what was going on. A question here from Tractor Monkey with JL. Uh, during the time with the show, were all the crew, such as camera and sound people, directors, etc., full-time employees of the studio, or were they contractors that came in to do the work as needed? Um, they were not, uh, contracted with the studio. They were hired by our production company, Lorimar. Um, so they might be contracted for the season. A director was an independent contractor, so they would just be hired per show. They were not a full-time employee, but otherwise um, the crew was hired. They may have been paid via the Warner Brothers payroll, so that I'm not entirely sure about. Another question we might ask John Dayton when he comes on again. Um, today, it depends who's producing something. So if Universal Studios is doing a number of shows, they might have people that are under Universal's payroll or Warner Brothers payroll, but um, oftentimes a production company has people that they like to work with, producers, you know, directors, things like that, and films certainly work differently. That's what I have for you for this segment of Ask Judy. I will be back with more of your questions in Ask Judy and more of behind the scenes of the Waltons. Thanks for watching.